Hello and welcome to this introduction to 3D animation using 3ds Max. In this video we're going to be animating a bouncing ball and I've drawn out the path of the ball but first of all let's just talk about animating in general. If you don't know how something moves, how it reacts to other objects, then look at real life examples or you can look at videos and photos and so on online. So a bouncing ball, okay the way a ball bounces is going to vary depending on a lot of factors but we're just going to take a simple example. So the ball starts up, well we're starting off in the air and then it's going to strike the surface, bounce up, fall and bounce again. Note that each time it bounces up, it bounces up less each time until it comes to a halt and doesn't bounce anymore. As I said there's a lot of factors and the ball may experience other movements such as it might roll along and so on but we're just going to keep it nice and simple. Ok let's look at the animation controls in 3ds Max. Down here we have the timeline which shows the different frames we have a frame slider which allows us to go to different frames and also moves during playback. We also can play the animation, move to the next or previous frames, uh, go to the start and we can also enter a frame number to jump straight to that. We also have a time configuration option to change playback speed and other options. And then we also have the auto key and set key buttons which allow us to select the two main types of animation. Basically in auto key mode 3ds Max automatically records different transformations that make the animation. In set key mode we have to tell the 3ds Max to record the transformations. Generally auto key mode is easier to use for beginners but set key mode gives us more control and avoids things such as accidentally recording transformations when we didn't mean to. So let's create our bouncing ball animation. First of all let's create a plane in the top view. We only need one length and width segment. And let's set the size doesn't matter too much as long as something you know the ball has something to hit so it looks convincing uh, and then let's move it to the center let's not worry about materials or anything that's not important at the moment and let's create a sphere uh, to be the bouncing ball and let's move that into its starting position just going to move it up a bit. Uh, if we, yeah, that would do. Uh, I don't think it's quite going to uh, hit the floor, so I'll just move that along a bit. Maybe up a bit more as well. Okay, so let's enter auto key mode, and we're currently at frame zero. So the ball's going to start off in the air. Let's move to frame 10 and then let's move the ball all the way down to the floor. Okay, it has actually missed the floor. <laughs> uh, let's move the slider along like so. Move it up some more. Obviously, you can use the grid lines to help you, but I'm just doing a rough at the moment. Let's go to 30. And let's move it back down to the ground again, just roughly and to 40. Let's move it up again slightly, and less this time, and then to 50. And let's move it down so it hits the floor. Okay, now. What I can show you is, we'll come out of auto key mode, let's make this bigger so that the ball will hit it. There we go. Now when we move the slider, we should see that the ball indeed moves. Like so. It will play back the animation in whatever 
uh, window section was selected. So let's click play and we see the ball bounces. The funny thing is the color of the ball looks a bit like an egg. <laughs> so if we go to uh, time configuration down here and set it to say half the speed and let's go back to the beginning you see it moves slower that's a bit better and you see that is quite convincing there's a lot we can do to improve that but it's actually quite good okay let's look at improving our ball animation but before doing that I just wanted to point out that on the timeline 3ds Max shows the different transformations for the currently selected object so see these red blocks here they show that the object's been translated that is moved green blocks are for rotation and it's colors different colors for other transformations so what we're going to do is move the ball along over time this is a little fiddly, fiddly to do but bear with me so it's going to auto key mode so when we get to here, frame 10, let's move the ball along uh, a fair amount. And on to 20, see it's reverted back, so we've got to remember how much we moved it last time. Again, you'll see the grid lines help a lot. I'm sure there was an easy way to do this, but it's not wanting me to do it, that's for sure. And then the last one, move it the furthest. Okay, let's come out of auto key mode. Keep this window selected. Let's go to the beginning and play it. See, there's quite a bit of a jump there, so you'd have to play with that uh, and fine tune that. So maybe at the last bounce, that's a bit too much. So we can go back into auto chemo. This is what it's about varying things, trying things out, trying to get to a bit convincing. Let's play that. Yeah, that's better. As I said, the ball might roll along a bit, so you could perhaps move it a bit further, but get the basic flow working and then play with the values and get to your liking. Use the 2D views, not just the 3D views, because sometimes the 3D view can be deceptive um, and um, you can see it more clearly in the 2D view. Okay, let's improve the animation now by adding rotation to the ball. But before we do that, we're going to add a material so that we can see that it's rotating clearly. And let's just add a UVW map and set to spherical mapping so that it fits nicely. Now, rotating like with translating is a bit fiddly in 3ds Max, or probably there's an easier way, but it's just the way I had to do it. So we have to move to frame. 10. Make sure rotation is selected. And I'm going to add rotation uh, amounts that decreases each time. Start at 45, 80, just roughly. You can play with the values like so. So slightly less each time. It's such a short animation because it's hard to see, you know, get an idea of rotation and stuff, but just have to play and get used to it. Let's go back to the beginning. Now, see, there's a green block because we've got rotation. We can, if we want, go to filter and current transformation. It'll just show the blocks, the frames that we have transformations for the current uh, transformation, which is rotation in this case. Uh, but let's put it back to all keys and then let's play it. We see there's some rotation, not very fast, but it's okay considering the ball doesn't fall for long. But again, you can play with those values and get it to our liking. Okay, let's now produce a video file 
of our animation, which fortunately 3ds Max allows us to do very easily. We need to go is go on rendering, render setup, click on range, enter the range, which in our case is 0 to 50, and then go to save file, check that, and go on files and then to a file name in a certain location, and then click on render. I already created one, so I'm going to overwrite it. Now, it, as you can see, it's going to render every frame. So, when you're starting off with creating video files, keep the materials very simple. Otherwise, it's going to take a long time to render when you have like reflection and all that stuff. So, once you're happy with the um, animation, then you can add all the fancy effects and render because it will take a significant time. See, even with that short animation, which lasts about a second, that's a lot of frames um, and quite a bit you know time to render as well so I'm now going to play the video file which I saved on the desktop here it is and there we go one second 50 frames for one second so you can see animation can take a lot of work but it's very much worth it now just to say that if you want to go back to rendering a single uh, frame you can just take off save file, go back to single and then go on render. The other thing is when you come to saving your uh, animation as a video file you may find that it comes out too fast or too slow. If you go to time configuration that has no effect, that's only on the playback. What you can do uh, also under time configuration is go on to rescale time and change the length and increase the number of frames then when you save as a video file it will be a longer uh, video. Here is a um, Tetris animation I created which uses dynamic lights 